It was 1 p.m., eh? Boom! Contradiction! You found the body at 1 p.m., you're sure? Yes, it was 1 p.m., for certain. Oh, damn, bro! You just got caught, yo! You're in so much trouble, man! I find that evidence hard to believe. The statement directly contradicts the autopsy report. Your honor, the autopsy notes the time of death is sometime after 4 p.m. <laughs> Welcome back to another episode of Let's Play Thousand Games. I'm your host, Gaming J, and today we're hopping into Phoenix Wright Ace Attorney. This game was originally released on the Game Boy Advance in Japan, and then subsequently was ported to all different kinds of systems, including the Nintendo DS for us Westerners. Now, I have never seen Phoenix Wright. I don't really know much about it. However, I feel like I'm familiar with with uh the sort of anime style like i might have seen it in memes or something like that i'm not 100 percent sure so like when i say i've never seen it i it, is it a tv show or a comic I've, I've never seen either of those but i feel like i've seen clips or gifs or just memes i don't know it's sort of like uh i can imagine uh lawyers in a courtroom like pointing at each other aggressively and shouting and it's sort of like anime style where like the background is going crazy and their hair is going nuts and it's all very exaggerated and stuff anime has this very exaggerated larger than life sort of presentation typically of everything from uh combat to just casual conversation so anyway let's go ahead and hop in maybe we'll learn something about what phoenix wright is um, now this is a, this is basically a, a digital novel, I think. Um, I mean, you feel like at this point in the quest, uh, you know, I never played a Nintendo DS when it came out because I didn't own one, but we've played a number of them for this 1001 journey. And I'm starting to realize about half the Nintendo DS games, or at least half the notable ones people love, tend to be more or less digital novels, it seems. Actually, maybe that's an exaggeration. Maybe not half, but there's a good chunk that are just sort of, uh, more laid back experiences, but let, let's see what this one is about. I don't know. Maybe it'll be more interactive than I'm thinking here, but I've read it is sort of a, a digital novel. Gasp, gasp. Somebody's just dripping blood, man. Out of their head. Oh, it's a statue. I see. Oh, a murder most foul. Damn it. Why me? I can't get caught. Not like this. Okay, evil criminal man. I've got to find someone to pin this on. I like how he's like so scared that he accidentally killed someone, yet he had the foresight to wear like leather gloves. <laughs> like, when you go to a business meeting with somebody that, uh, I, like, I don't know who this guy is, but when you go to meet with somebody and you intentionally put on like fingerprint hiding leather gloves ahead of the meeting, there's a good chance you might maybe subconsciously be thinking about, I don't know, murdering them. Uh, anyway. So here we are. Boy, am I nervous. Right! Oh my goodness. That's the chief? Yowza. We can uh, see her brassiere. She's missing a button. Oh, hiya, chief. Phew. I'm glad I made it on time. Do we get to date her? Does this turn into a dating simulator at some point? Because that, you know, that's a story-based Nintendo DS game I, I'm down with. Um, I have to say, Phoenix, I'm impressed. Not everyone takes on a murder trial right off the bat like this. It says a lot about you and your client as well. Um, thanks? Actually, it's because I owe him a favor. A favor? You mean you knew the defendant before the case? Yes. Actually, I kind of owe my current job to him. He's one of the reasons I became an attorney. Well, that's news to me. Maybe you should figure this stuff out before you assign cases to your rookie attorneys, lady. Chief. Um, I want to help him out any way I can. I just really want to help him. I owe him that much. It's over! My life! Everything! It's all over! Isn't that your client screaming over there? Yeah, that's him. Death! Despair! Oh god! I'm gonna do it! I'm gonna die! Sounds like he wants to die. Um, yeah. Oh, there he is. Oh, look at him. Totally the over-exaggerated anime thing, like stars in the eyes, tears just streaming down your face like a river. 
Very interesting. It's just classically anime. I don't know. I don't know where anime got all its style things, but it's just like, it's just established at this point. I don't know. Dude, I'm so guilty. Tell them I'm guilty. Give me the death sentence. I'm afraid. I ain't afraid to die. What? What's wrong with you? Oh, it's all over. I, I'm finished. Finished. I can't live in a world without her. I can't. Who? Who took her away from me, Nick? Who did this? This guy's name is Butts. I'm just noticing that. Well, Mr. Butts, don't worry. I'm gonna find the dick who did this. And we're gonna jam him up, bro. Jam him up good! Cause let me just tell you, it takes a... a real a-hole to... do this. I don't know, my... my potty mouth puns all end for now. My name is Phoenix Wright. I've just realized I can just use the controller to... I don't have to click on the, the, the play button on the touch screen for now. So here's the story. My first case is a fairly simple one. A woman was just bleeding out on the floor. A young woman was killed in her apartment. The guy they arrested was unlucky sap dating her. Larry Butts. My best friend since grade school. That guy must have been ridiculed mercilessly in grade school. When something smells, it's usually the butts. Oh my god, yeah, there you go! <laughs> that's that's a, that's actually a pretty funny saying. In the 23 years I've known him, it's usually been true. This guy has uh, odor issues. He has a knack for getting himself in trouble. One thing I can say, though, it's usually not his fault. He just has terrible luck. Yes, the butt isn't always the luckiest part of the body, is it, guys? But I know better than anyone that he's a good guy at heart. And that, I owe him one. Which is why I took this case. To clear his name. And that's just what I'm gonna do. Alright, we I'm feeling the internal motivation build. We gotta save this butt. This butts. If for no other reason, then every, every butt deserves a second chance, I say. GUILTY! <laughs> we go in the court, the judge just slams the hammer down immediately. That would've been pretty funny. Court is now in session for the trial of Mr. Larry Butts. Prosecution is ready, Your Honor. That guy looks like a total dweeb. The um, defense is ready, Your Honor. I look, I look awesome, man. You know what? W win or lose this trial, I think my guy's going to the bar tonight and looking like this, being a lawyer. I'm sure he's gonna. I'm sure he's gonna. Uh, you know, I don't know. Meet a girl. Be successful. Whatever you do at bars these days. Mr. Wright, this is your first trial, is it not? Yes, Your Honor. I'm, uh, a little nervous. Your conduct during this trial will decide the fate of your client. Murder is a serious charge for your client's sake. I hope you can control your nerves. Thanks? So wait, his guilt or innocence is decided by how nervous his lawyer gets? It's a terrible system. Mr. Wright, given the circumstances, I think we should have a test to ascertain your readiness. Yes, Your Honor. Gulp. And shaking. Oh, now I don't look so confident. Eyesight fading. This will consist of a few simple questions. Answer them clearly and concisely. Please state the name of the defendant in this case. Oh my god, what is it? Uh, Larry Butts? <laughs> How could you forget that? The defendant? Well, that's Larry Butts, Your Honor. I guess maybe they did this in case you skipped the story. Uh, to like, force you to go back. I don't know what would happen if you got these wrong. Kind of want to know. Kind of want to mess up just to see, but anyway. Next question. This is a murder trial. Tell me what the victim's name was. Um, oh, that I wasn't really paying attention to, honestly. It's, uh... Uh-oh. No. No way I forgot. I'm drawing a total blank here. Phoenix, are you absolutely sure you're up to this? My god. I... Uh, they're just drawing total attention to it. Look, her, her boobs are just popping out of her shirt. That's insane. The angle. Unbelievable. What am I supposed to be paying attention to? Uh, the victim. Oh, of course, I knew the victim's name. I, um, just forgot. Temporarily. I think I feel a migraine coming on. Look, the defendant's name is listed on the court record. Just touch the court record button to check it at any time, okay? Remember to check it often. Do it for me. Do it for me, please, I'm begging you. Be taken out of context. Let's hear your answer. Okay, we gotta find out the victim's name. There's my attorney ba uh, badge. So Cindy's autopsy, oh, her name's Cindy. Time of death, uh, so that's July 31st. Don't know if that's relevant, 4 to 5 p.m. 
Cause of death, loss of blood due to blunt trauma. Oh, is that it? It's a very short report. Cindy. That's that's her name. That's all I know. No one would believe I was a defense attorney if I didn't carry this. Okay, those are the only two things I have on me. No wallet, no car keys, nothing, no mints. Nothing. Uh-oh, we have two options. Cindy Stone or Cindy Block. Is there any way to... Read that in more detail. Cause of death, blunt. So we got a 50-50 shot at guessing this right. Uh, Cindy Block. Oh, um, wasn't it Miss Block? Miss Cin- Oh, I- Cinder Block! Oh, I thought that said Cindy! Oh my god, right. If you forget something, just touch the court records to help you remember. A mistaken court could cost you the case. I'll ask you again. Let's hear your answer. It's not Cinder Block, it's Cindy Stone. That's so funny. I, my brain just, I, I, I saw Cindy in both places. I was barely paying attention, oh my god. The victim's name is Cindy Stone. The judge is like, this guy's got it. This guy's good. This guy's better than good. This guy's really good. I'm pressing him, man. She died because... Poison. No, she was hit with a blunt object. She was struck once with a blunt object. Correct. You answered all my questions. I see no reason why we shouldn't proceed. You know your, de you know your defendant's name, the victim name, and the the. Isn't that just basic stuff that we sh definitely should know? I mean, I guess it's good that they check because if we didn't know that, that's really problematic. But I don't feel like that should give him a ton of assurance that I'm uh, fully capable of buying this uh, this case. But whatever, let's go on. Yes, Your Honor. As Mr. Wright just told us, the victim was struck by a blunt object. Would you explain to the court just what that object was? The murder weapon was the statue of the thinker. It was found lying on the floor next to the victim. I see. The court accepts this into evidence. Statue added to the court record. Right. Be sure to pay attention to any evidence during the trial. Evidence is only ammunition you have in court. Touch the court record button to check the court record frequently. Okay, I like this. It's sort of like... I imagine this is going to be a bit like a puzzle game. I mean, we'll see, but I imagine it's going to go a bit like a puzzle game where you kind of have to make some deductions and guesses and then sort of, you know, win a trial case. That's kind of cool. I haven't seen a puzzle game like this before, so... I'm down with this idea. Let's do it. Uh, the prosecution may call its first witness. Prosecution calls the defendant Mr. Butts. Now, hold on. Let's take a quick look. At this weapon here. A statue in the shape of the thinker. It's rather heavy. All right, keep that in mind, guys. Rather heavy. Now let's see where this goes. Chief, what do I do now? Is she just standing beside... Oh, she is standing beside me. Is she helping me? I thought she was had just walked into the courtroom and was, like, standing by the entrance shouting things at me, but I think she's, like, literally my co-counsel here. You don't want to miss any information that might help your client's case. You know, I do kind of feel, though, that if she's right here, maybe she should be the one trying this. But, I mean, I guess everybody, everybody's everybody got to get the training wheels off at some point in their career. You'll get a chance to respond later, so be ready. Let's just hope he doesn't say anything unfortunate. <laughs> Larry gets excited easily. This could be bad. <laughs> just look at him. My God. Mr. Butts, is it not true that the victim had recently dumped you? Hey, watch it, buddy! What is happening to his face? He's turning into a monster. We were great together. We were Romeo and Juliet, Cleopatra, and Mark Anthony. Um, didn't they all die? I wasn't dumped. She just wasn't talking, taking my phone calls, or seeing me, ever. What's it to you, anyway? We did not prep this witness properly, guys. Mr. Butts, what you describe is generally what we mean by dumped. In fact, she had completely abandoned you and was seeing other men. She just returned from overseas with one of them the day before the murder. Well, that guy's the killer! Jeez. What do you mean, one of them lies? All of it lies. I don't believe a word of it. Your Honor, the victim's passport. According to this, she was in Paris until the day before she died. Passport added to the court record. Hmm, indeed, she appears to have returned the day before the murder. Dude, no way. The victim was a model. 
but not but did not have a large income. It appears that she had several sugar daddies. Daddies? Sugar? Yes, older men who gave her money and gifts in exchange for, well, you know. She took all their money and used it to support her lifestyle. Dude. We can clearly see what kind of woman this Mrs. Stone was. Tell me, Mr. Butts, what do you think of her now? Mr. Wright, I don't think you want him to answer this question. Yeah, Larry has a way of ruining his, uh, running his mouth all in all the wrong directions. Should I object? Your Honor, I object. My client had no idea the victim was seeing other men. That question is irrelevant to the case. Oof, wince. It's like I, I sucker punched him. Dude, Nick, what do you mean irrelevant? That cheating she dog. She dog? An insult. I'm gonna die. I'm just gonna drop dead. Yeah, when I meet her in the afterlife, I'm gonna get to the bottom of this. Bald plan, bro. Let's continue with the trial, shall we? I believe the accused motives is clear to everyone. Yes, quite. You know, I will say we've played a number of DS games and there have always there's always some of them have had a lot of dialogue and sometimes I've complained about that. This one is like almost all dialogue, but I kind of feel more or less entertained as we're going through this. So I don't know. Maybe I'm just in a better mood today or maybe it truly is like, you know, the, the dialogue is more interesting and like more is happening. But I'm I feel like I'm, I'm good with this so far. Like I'm we're going to keep going, obviously, but. I just wanted to sort of mention that as we're going through that I'm like, we're going through a lot of dialogue and not too much gameplay, but so far it's been fairly entertaining. So anyway, also I feel like I have to pay attention to the dialogue because it's going to be my turn in court soon and we're going to have to like figure out how to flip, flip the script and find the real murderer. But I have some ideas about that. Let's just see what happens. You went to the victim's apartment on the day of the murder. Did you not gulp? Well, did you or did you not? Hey, 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 well, maybe I did and maybe I didn't. Dude, just answer the question. <laughs> what do I do? Um, we're gonna have him answer this one honestly. I know, I'll send him a signal. Tell the truth. Or, yeah, yeah, I was there, I went. Rubble, 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 rubble. Order, well, Mr. Butts. Dude, chill. She was home, man, so like, I didn't, she wasn't home, man, so like, I didn't see her. Objection! Your Honor, the defendant is lying. Lying? The prosecution would like to call a witness who can prove Mr. Butts is lying. Let's simplify matters, who's your witness? The man who found the victim's body just before making the gruesome discovery. He saw the defendant fleeing the scene of the crime. Rubble, 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 rubble. This guy's totally the killer who's who's gonna come up, I'm pretty sure. The prosecution may call his witness. Don't I get to cross-examine? It's all flying by so fast. Man, the, the criminal justice system in Japan is all over the place. It's, it's as messy as a... <laughs> as a video game based on an anime series. Because I assume this is 100% legitimately how the Japanese conduct, uh, conduct their court cases. But anyway. The day of the murder, my witness was selling newspapers at the victim's building. Please bring Mr. Frank Sawit to the stand. All right, this guy's 100%. Oh, that totally is the killer, too. So, I mean, obviously we as the player know that's the killer, so now we have to figure out how to, like, make this guy confess. You sell newspaper subscriptions, is that correct? Oh, oh, yes. Newspapers, yes. Mr. Sawit, you may proceed with your testimony. Please tell the court what you saw on the day of the murder. Witness testimony. Now right, let's see what he says. I was going door to door selling subscriptions when I saw a man fleeing an apartment. I thought he must be in a hurry because he left the door half open behind him. Thinking it strange, I looked inside the apartment and I saw her lying there, a woman not moving, dead. I quailed in fright and found myself unable to go inside. I thought to call the police immediately. However, the phone in her apartment wasn't working. I went to the nearby park and found a public phone. I remember the time exactly. It was 1 p.m. I don't know why I'm talking like this. 
The man who ran was, without a doubt, the defendant sitting right over there. Alright, that's pretty damning. Larry, why didn't you tell the truth? I can't defend you against testimony like that! Ah uh, yes, one man who has definitely not proven himself trustworthy. Maybe, maybe not, but yeah, how can we possibly defend against that? Incidentally, why wasn't the phone in the victim's apartment working? Your Honor, at the time of the murder, there was a blackout in the building. Aren't phones supposed to work during a blackout? Yes, Your Honor. However, some cordless phones do not function normally. The phone that Mr. Sweet used was one of those. Your Honor, I have a record of the blackout for your perusal. Blackout was added to the court records. Okay, so if there was a blackout, here's my guess. How could he have, like, seen all this stuff if there was no light? Mr. Wright, yes, er, yes, Your Honor. You may begin your cross-examination. Cross-examination, Your Honor? <laughs> Did this guy even pass law school? I'm not a lawyer, and I know these basic things from just watching uh, movies and stuff. Electricity in Mrs. Stone's building was out from noon to 6 p.m. on the day of the crime. All right, so, I mean, these seem to be multiple-choice options that were given, so hopefully, like, we'll have the options to put these together, but we have, there was a blackout. She had returned the day before on 7.30, and she was hit with a statue, and she died at 7, on, on July 31st at 4 to 5 p.m., eh? And there was a blackout from noon to 6. Okay. Well, she died from 4 to 5, and that guy er, er, earliest could have found her at like 4, like just after 4. Okay, well, let's just sort of see what, uh, what happens here as we carry on the story. <clears throat> I really am trying to sort of put the case together myself, but obviously we're probably just going to have like three choices, and it's like one's going to be obvious to like get this guy uh, to mess up. All right, right, this is it. The real deal. Uh, what exactly am I supposed to do? Why, you exposed the lies in the testimony the witness just gave. Lies? What? He was lying? Your client is innocent, right? And that witness must have, have lied in his testimony. Or is your client really guilty? Um, how do I prove he's not? You hold the key. It's in the evidence. Compare the witness's testimony to the evidence at hand. There's bound to be a contradiction in there. First, find contradictions between the court record and the witness's testimony. Then, once you found the contradicting evidence, present it and rub it in the witness's sweet, sloppy face. Okay, touch the court record button and point out the contradictions in the testimony. Okay, let's do this. Cross-examination, witness's account. All right. I was going door to door selling subscriptions when I saw a man fleeing uh, an apartment. Okay. I thought he must be in a hurry because he left the door half open behind. Half open. I think it's strange. I looked inside the apartment, then I saw her lying there, not moving, dead. So hold on. What? Wait. Uh oh. Are you sure she was dead? Well, no, I guess I wasn't. But she wasn't moving at all, and there was blood everywhere. I guess that would look fatal to anyone. Very well, what happened next? Okay, I see. The so press is to, like, question him. What is present? Oh, present. Time of death. Blunt trauma, the statue. I wonder why he actually killed her, because we do know this guy killed her. I guess it's gonna come out. Um, okay, let's, I, I don't know what to present, so we're just gonna keep going forward for a bit. I quailed in fright and found myself unable to go inside. I thought to call the police immediately. However, the phone in her apartment wasn't working. I went to a nearby park and found a public phone. Time exactly, it was 1 p.m. Oh, hello! It was 1 p.m., eh? Boom! Contradiction! You found the body at 1 p.m., you're sure? Yes, it was 1 p.m., for certain. Oh, damn, bro! You just got caught, yo! You're in so much trouble, man! 
I find that evidence hard to believe. The statement directly contradicts the autopsy report. Your honor, the autopsy notes the time of death is sometime after 4 p.m. There was nobody to... Nobody to find at 1 p.m. How do you explain this three-hour gap? Oh, he's sweating. Oh, uh, that. Oh, um, uh, objection. This is trivial. The witness merely forgot the time. Plus, we know time is completely immutable and completely transitory. There's no such thing as time itself. Completely fabricated construct of the imagination. Judge is like, I'm not buying it. Time is definitely a constant. After his testimony, I find that hard to believe. Mr. Sweet, why are we so certain you found the body at 1 p.m.? I, er, well, I... Gee, that's a really good question. Great job, right? Way to put him on the spot. That's all you have to do. Point out the contradictions. Lies always beget more lies. See through one and their whole story. I, this is fun. I like this. That, that was kind of cool to, like, actually, like, figure out, like, how we could, uh, you know... Point out his lies. I remember now. Would you care to give your testimony again? Okay, he's gonna lie more. <laughs> this is actually fun. I want to see what he says, and then I want to point him out as a liar. All right. You see, when I found the body, I heard the time. It was voices saying the time. It was probably coming from the television. Oh, boom! Power outage. We just caught another lie. Oh, but it was three hours off, wasn't it? I guess the victim must have been watching a videotaped program. That's why I thought it was 1 p.m. Terribly sorry about that misunderstanding. Oh, this one's an easy one. We're totally gonna point this out. You heard a voice saying the time on a tape program. Mr. Wright, you may cross-examine your witness. Right. You know what to do. I've got this one. Ah, uh, this guy's going downtown, man. He's going on the pain train. Because I know exactly um, what we're gonna room with. I found the body. I heard the time. There was a voice saying the time is probably coming from the television. Well, that's odd, considering that there was a blackout at the time. Hold it right there. The prosecution has said there was a blackout at the time of the discovery, and its record proves it. Uh, and he's like sweating more. Oh yeah, you couldn't have heard a television or a video. Uh, maybe it was one of, was one of them battery-powered TVs. Um, Irk. The defense has a point. Do you have an explanation for this, Mr. Sawit? No, I uh, find it quite puzzling myself. Yeah. Wait, I remember now, Mr. Sweet. The court would prefer to hear an accurate testimony from the very beginning. These constant corrections are harming your credibility. I'd say at this point he has none, but give him one more shot. Um, you seem rather distraught. M my apologies, Your Honor. It, er, it must have been a shock of finding the body. Very well, Mr. Sweet. Let's hear your testimony once more. Third time's a charm. We're going to show this guy to be a liar. All right, buddy. What do you got? Actually, I didn't hear the time. I saw it. There was a table clock in the apartment, wasn't there? Yeah, the, mur the murder weapon. The killer used it to hit the victim. Uh, that must have been what I saw. Okay, but he didn't use a clock. Uh, you saw a clock? I guess I would explain it. The defense may cross-examine the witness. Gladly. Alright, this one's an easy one, guys. So he claims that the, uh... Clock... Uh, was the, uh, murder weapon. And it was not. So let's go ahead and... PRESENT! OBJECTION! Wait just a moment. The murder weapon wasn't a clock. It was a statue. Now how is this supposed to be a clock? What? You, you with your objections and your evidence. Just who do you think you are? Just answer the question, Mr. Sweet. Hey, I, I saw it there, okay? That's a clock. Your Honor, if I may. Yes, Mr. Payne. As the witness stated in this statue is indeed a clock, uh, the neck is a switch. You just tilt it and it says the time out loud. As it doesn't look like a clock, I submit it as a statue. My apologies. I see. So the murder weapon was a table clock after all. 
Well, Mr. Wright, it appears the witness's testimony was correct. This is a clock. Do you have any problems with this testimony now? Um, let's see, do I? I have to think about this. Um, yes, because he said he didn't go into the apartment, but he must have gone in to touch the weapon. There's a gaping hole in the witness's testimony. The only way he could have known the weapon was a clock is to hold it in his hand. Exactly. Yet the witness testified he never entered the apartment. Exactly. Wow, this, this is actually really fun. It's like solving a puzzle of lies. It's like, I, you know, we've played all sorts of different puzzle games on this channel, but like... Interrogating wait this is really fun, like finding lies in people's testimonies. I it's I know it's pretty basic stuff. You know, it doesn't take a genius to do this, but this it, it feels very satisfying to, to catch this guy lying. And I love the over the the over exaggerated like anime style like totally works in this. I feel like I'm it's like a battle of uh battle of wits. Guys, I think I understand why people want to be lawyers now. I finally get it. It's kinda cool actually. Um Anyway, the witness knew it was a clock because he went into the apartment. You're lying. You were inside the apartment on the day of the murder. Oh yeah? Prove it. Prove I went in there. I'll do better than that. I can prove you were the one who killed her. Whoa, I didn't say that, but my guy's <laughs> uh, ace attorney here is going off on his own. You struck her with the clock, and the shock of the blow triggered the clock's voice. Oh, so that's what happened. Okay. That was the sound- Oh, there's the crazy anime background. That was the sound you heard. Rubble, 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 rubble. Guilty! Every time he slams that uh, gavel down, I just think in my head, Guilty! <laughs> Order in the court. Intriguing. Please continue, Mr. Wright. Yes, your honor. Oh, look at this. Mr. Sweet. The sound... Uh, must have left quite an impression on you. Understandably, since the murder weapon spoke just as you hit the victim, the voice was burned into your mind. That's why you were so certain about the time. Objection! What's the meaning of this? This is all baseless conjecture. Best kind of conjecture. Baseless? Just look at the witness's face. Nyag, nyag. I'll get you and your little dog, too. Would the witness care to elaborate? Did you strike the victim with the clock? I, I, that day I, I never, look, I, the clock heard no, I mean I saw, whoa, his hair just totally came off. That's a, that's a defeated man when he rips the hair off his scalp. Shut up, shut up, shut up, shut up, I hate you. It was him, I tell you, I saw him. He killed her and he should burn, burn, give him death. This witness is just falling apart, man. Order in the court, I say. Your Honor, a moment, please. There isn't a shred of evidence supporting the defense's claim. Mr. Wright? Your Honor! You claim the sound of the witness you heard came from the clock? Do you have any evidence? The whole case is riding on this. I better think through carefully. Uh, yes, Your Honor. The sound Mr. Sweet heard definitely... It was definitely this clock. Act which is clear because you simply... Um, okay, forget about the batteries, or the, you could ask the neighbors, but I don't think anyone else heard. Oh god, this is a big decision. I don't know! Okay, let's think about this for, let's take one moment to think this through, let's not make an impulsive decision here. Examine the clock's batteries, what will that do? You'll see that the clock has batteries. That doesn't do anything. Um, ask the neighbors. I don't think the neighbors heard anything. Let's check our court records. Uh, she died. Time of death, 4 to 5 p.m. Statue in the shape of the thinker. Arrived home the day before. There's no power. Maybe the neighbors would have heard something. Let's try, I want to try sounding the clock. I don't know if that's right or not, but let's do it. Let's sound the clock and hear this in court. Your Honor, may I have the clock? Ask the court to listen very carefully. Beep. 
I think it's 8.25. That certainly is a strange way to announce the time. Well, he is the thinker, after all. So we've heard the clock. What are your conclusions, Mr. Wright? Mr. Payne, can you tell me what time it is now? It's 11.25. Ack. As you can see, this clock is exactly three hours slow. Oh! <laughs> wow. My, my random guess worked out. I'm the best attorney ever. Precisely the discrepancy between what Mr. Sweet heard and the actual time of death. So, Mr. Sweet, try to talk your way out of this one. Guy is, like, having a full-on breakdown, man. Sweet is just like, ha, 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 ha. He's, like, foaming at the mouth. You forgot one thing. Uh-oh, what's he talking about? Well, it may seem like the clock is running three hours slow. Proves nothing. How do you know it was running three hours slow the day of the murder? If you can't prove that, you don't have a case. Hmm, he's right. How am I going to prove that? God, I was so close. Mr. Wright, did you lack the critical evidence to support your claim? Um, yes, your honor. This means I cannot let you indict the witness, unfortunately. Oh no, did I just fail? This ends the cross-examination. Come all the way down here to testify and look what happens. They treat me like a criminal. A criminal! You lawyers are all slime. Grr, I almost had him. Sorry, Larry. I failed you. Uh-oh. There's nothing I can do about it now. Oh no, did I just fail? Not so fast, Mr. Sweet. Oh, oh, Mia! I mean, Chief. Listen up, right? Don't throw this one away. Not like this. Think. But Chief, it's over. I can't prove the clock was slow the day of the murder. Nobody can prove that. Um, well, yes. Uh, but that doesn't mean you can't still win. Try thinking out of the box. Don't waste time doubting the facts. Assume the clock was three hours slow and think through it. Ask yourself, why was the clock three hours slow? Figure out the reason and you'll have proof. Right? Right? You think of a reason as to why the clock would be three hours slow? Oh, because she was in France. Yes. Oh, man, time zones. They're factoring in. You guys know what time zones are? You must. You're all adults. If you don't, that's crazy. That's insane that you don't, if you don't. Time zones. You must have evidence somewhere. Find it and let them have it. Well, Mr. Wright, you said the clock was already running slow on the day of the murder. Have you found the evidence to support this claim? Of course I have. I'm three steps ahead, Mr. Judge. Whatever your name is, because I forget your name, Judge, but don't worry. Let's see you pull this one off. Let's see this evidence that proves why the clock was running slow. Well, it's, uh, you see, obvious when you consider she was in France. Boom. The victim had just returned home from abroad the day before the murder. As we all know, the time difference between here and Paris is nine hours. When it's 4 p.m. here, it's 1 a.m. the next day there. The clock wasn't three hours slow, it was nine hours fast. The victim hadn't reset her clock since returning home. That's why that time you heard you struck her dead in her apartment was wrong. Boom, proof enough for you, Mr. Sweet. Or should I say, Mr. Did it. <laughs> oh, burn, man. Yarg. Oh, he is foaming. Oh, he foamed at the mouth and died. <laughs> He died of guilt. <laughs> oh my goodness. Order, order, I say. Uh, well, this case has certainly turned out differently than we all expected. Mr. Payne, your client, he, er, he was arrested and has been taken away, Your Honor. Very well, Mr. Wright. Yes, Your Honor. I have to say, I'm impressed. I don't think I've ever seen someone complete a defense so quickly. And find the true culprit at the same time. Thank you, Your Honor. At this point, this is the only formality, but the court finds the defendant, Mr. Larry Butts, not guilty. Boom! We did it! Oh, and confetti falls from the ceiling, balloons fall down, a band comes out, a saxophone man starts playing in the audience. Woo! Party time, people. We won. Court is adjourned. And party time starts, and the judge just tears off his robe, and he's got a Speedo underneath, and the party begins. Turns out that Frank Sweet was a common burglar. He posed as a newspaper salesman to check to see when people were out of the house. 
That day, oh, yeah, this is what actually happened. When Larry went to see, went to her apartment, the victim wasn't home. After he left, Mr. Sweet let himself in to do his dirty work. Uh, while he was searching her place, the victim returned. Flustered, Mr. Sweet grabbed the nearest blunt object he could find and mercilessly beat her to death. Why not just flee? August 3rd, 2.32 p.m., District Court, Defendant Lobby Number 2. Phew, I still can't believe we won. Right, good job in there. Congratulations. Uh, thanks, Chief. I owe it all to you. Not at all, not at all. You forgot. You fought your own battles in there. It's been a while since I've seen a trial end on such a satisfying note. I've never seen the Chief looking this happy. If she's this glad, imagine how Larry must be feeling. My life is over. Larry, you're supposed to be happy. What's wrong now? Ah, oh, Nick, don't worry about me. I'll be dead and gone soon. Man, this guy's got issues. He, he must have been beat down his whole life with his last name of Butts, and just like he just doesn't value anything about himself, I guess. Um, Larry, you're innocent. The case is closed. But... But my Cindy Windy's gone, man. Gone forever. Yeah, that, that's brutal. Larry, she was a... Nah, no. Was he going to say a prostitute? Was he going to be like, don't worry, man. Her, don't worry, man. Her life didn't matter. She was only a, a hooker. Oh, man. Uh, congratulations, Harry. Harry? Yes, you. I can't practically see the head headlines now. Harry Butts. Harry Butts Innocent. Nice pun. Uh, um, thanks. I really owe you one. I won't forget this, ever. Let's celebrate. Dinner, movie, my treat. Oh, no, I couldn't. Hey, I wasn't the one who got you off the hook. Oh, hey. Here, take this as a present. Oh, yes, leave me the murder weapon. That will be a nice gift. Present for me? Wait. Wasn't this the evidence that... Actually, I made this clock for her. I made one for her and one for me. Oh, really? You you made this? Well, thank you. I'll keep it as a memento. Yo, Nick, can you believe it? I was so into that chick, and, and she was just playing me for a fool. Don't that just make you want to cry, sob? Larry? He's just like, are you so sure? Excuse me? <laughs> I think she thought quite a lot of you in her own way. Nah, you don't gotta sympathize with me. It's okay. Oh, I'm not just sympathizing, really. Isn't that right, right? Don't you have something to show your friend? Something that proves how she felt about him? Huh? Oh, oh yeah, right. Um, what the heck is she talking about? Exactly! Um, okay. Her autopsy report. Um... I guess it's the statue, because it wouldn't be the bl the bl it wouldn't be the blackout record. It wouldn't be the autopsy report. So it's between the passport and the statue. Um, I'll go with the statue. Um, doing that. Check this out, Larry. Proof positive you weren't just some chump to her, huh? Where did you get that clock? This is the clock you made for her, Larry. She took it with her. Oh, he wasn't in the court when all that crap went down? So he doesn't know this was a thing that beat her to death? She probably just needed a clock, that's all. You think so? It's a pretty heavy clock to take traveling. Well, make of it what you will. Hey, Nick. I'm glad I asked you to be my lawyer. Really, I am. Thanks. Hope that made him feel a little better. Well, that's a nice little uh, epilogue to the, the court trial. I hope you see the importance of evidence now. Also, hopefully you realize things change depending on how you look at them. People, too. We never really know if our clients are guilty or innocent. All we can do is believe in them. And in order to believe in them, you have to believe in yourself. This is, this is like good advice for any lawyer out there. Listen, learn, grow strong. Never let go of what you believe in. Never. Well, I think our work here is done. Shall we be off? Yeah, I guess so. Say, how about dinner on me? You hitting on me, chief? We'll drink and toast to innocent butts everywhere. 
Yeah, she's coming on me, guys. It's going down. Let's go to this dinner. Oh, speaking of Harry, you were saying part of why you became a lawyer was because of him. Uh, yeah, part at least. You'll have to tell me about it sometime. Maybe over drinks? Aren't we going to dinner? I mean, we can have drinks too. I don't care. We'll do it all. And so my first trial came to a close. Larry slapped me on the back and said, Gee, Nick, it's good to have friends, but I'm pretty sure he's not going to pay me unless you count the clock. Oh, oh we did that one pro bono, eh? Well, that's okay. There'll be plenty more where that came from. There'll be plenty more murders where that came from. People is always killing each other. I didn't know it then, but that clock was soon going to be at the center of another incident. Oh, no. And my promise to tell the chief about me and Larry would be one promise that I wouldn't be able to keep. Oh, no, is the chief going to get killed? The end. All righty. Well, that was a that was a great little experience, I think. Um, now, normally when we try a game, we try and go through a couple of levels. But that one episode, I, I feel like kind of took up uh, quite a bit of time. So I think I'm going to wrap up here for today. Mostly just because I, I didn't think I'd be playing this game for like an hour and a half today. So I don't actually have that much more time to, to record today's episode. But I had... I had such a, so much fun with this. I would 100% come back and play more episodes of this. So I don't know. If you guys found that fun and interesting and like you'd like to see more of this game, definitely comment down below letting me know you'd, you'd enjoy a follow-up sometime. Uh, I mean, you know, again, I, so depending on if people even want it. Um, but, you know, whether I make another episode or not, at some point I might come back and play a bit more of this just on my own. Um so, Phoenix Wright, Ace Attorney. I kind of came into this game with a bit of preconception, thinking, you know, like, oh, it's another story-based Nintendo DS game. We've seen so many of these, and you just click through endless dialogue, and there's not too much gameplay. And this was a lot of reading and a lot of story, yet it was awesome. It was... Uh, I I didn't I never felt like any conversation was lingering on like excessively. So it's like they did sort of move. So there was a lot of conversation, but a lot happened. And I think that's the key, you know, like if, you know, some games is played on the DS, there's a lot of conversation, but it's about the same thing. And they just take forever to, like getting to the point. I feel like this game got to the point. So we were able to move through the story rather quickly. There wasn't an excess of dialogue at any point. And because it was like a, a game about the law and about finding out lies and this and that, it ended up uh, it it ended up being really interesting in that like I was paying more attention to the li the the dialogue because I wanted to figure out the case. So it's like I was solving mystery with the characters, the mechanic in the courtroom of presenting the evidence and the objections and finding the lies was awesome. I don't know, like the the mechanics, the story, and and then like even the exaggerated anime. Uh, you know, response of the characters and stuff that all ended up working. And it's like it turned what could have just been, you know, a legal conversation into something that felt more like a fight, which which for video game purposes felt fun. So all in all, I'm thoroughly impressed by this game. I, I admittedly came in with preconceptions and I was proven wrong, and I was proven that this this is a cool game, a cool series, and I want to play more. So I don't know. Um, what do you guys think of this one? Is it a cool series? Is it is it a cool game? Is it maybe maybe you watch it and you like rolled your eyes the whole time? You're like, I don't know, Jay's having more fun than it is to watch it. Or maybe you guys had a blast too. Whatever the case may be, let me know what you think of this game down in the comments below. And again, if you would like to see me play more of this, you know, if enough people say that that would be cool, uh, I can make that happen at some point because uh, I would like to try a, a couple more episodes of this game at least. But Anyway, um, I look forward to hearing what you guys think about this game, and thank you for watching. Um, and other than that, I will catch you in the next one. So until next time, my friends, you all take care of yourselves, and peace.